Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com, and today we're going to test out on one software's um, Perfect Suite. Now, please turn up your volume and let's get started. We'll start by going here to Perfect Photo Suite. It's now a standalone application. See, it comes out by itself. Photoshop is not running. And we're going to go here to the desktop and we're going to start with Erica. Now, first thing you'll notice is that you have a fully integrated environment where you have layers, mask it, perfect mask, perfect portrait, perfect effects, focal point, photo frame, and perfect resize all integrated into one and you start with layers just as you would in Photoshop you have your layers um, since it's a separate application for on one that's where you start here now we're going to be real simple for this one we're going to go up here just to portrait and what happens is, is it tries to find the face and the facial features much like uh, portrait professional it's trying to um, do a little work for you but unlike portrait professional you don't have to give it a bunch of input it just figures it out on its own and if we do a comparison between the before and after you can see already that some colors have been enhanced um, not only in the facial area but here in the scalp and they've also um, softened the skin so that's sort of the default behavior but let's go back various modes here and we're going to go back to the default mode now if you want to see its detection let's come here and say overlay and you'll see that it's identified this area as being the face now notice it doesn't include the scalp in here but it's smart enough to figure out to include that when it does certain operations and it's identified the um, skin does not include the eyes or the nose um, we're specifically working on the face for this now we can go modify the areas of the text for a skin as eyes and mouth later if we like um, but that's not really required so at this point for this particular photo um, but if let's say for example for eyes I wanted to refine this area and exclude some of this oops I would see. See. I would X I would just come over here and paint out that area and out that area and now the eyes have been find just a tad bit more I'm going to switch over here to my Wacom 204 tablet for a little finer adjustments now you don't have to be this precise but just since we're doing it I'm going to go ahead and do that um, you can make adjustments for the lips Oops. So just like in Photoshop, you press X to exclude and um, X to switch back over to include, so painting in and painting out. So let's include that part of the lips. Now if we want to zoom in and see what we're doing here, come down here. This way we can work a little bit more precise. Notice I'm going to exclude her finger and fingertip here, which is a little French manicured. 
We don't want it to be mistaken as teeth. And I'm going to refine these little areas here just a tad. Again, this isn't this level of detail generally isn't required, but just for the sake of illustration, I'm doing a little more than I typically would. So you now you can see we've perfectly refined the mouth area here to as much accuracy as we wanted. And then now, if I come back up here and I go back to current, our changes um, now that we make to the different various facial facial features will be applied. So let's come down here. There's face size, which if we want to expand that out to, let's say, large. Extra large. Let's see if we go down here to overlay. It's included more area. I'm going to put this back to medium. Its original guess, I think, was fairly accurate. So I'll go back to current. Now, here's where we can control how much skin softening is applied. It's best to kind of zoom in to see what's happening here. So I'm going to come in. And I'm going to zoom in maybe to about this level here. And some people may find this to be just a little too much skin softening, so you could back off a bit, see more of the texture coming through, and then add as you see fit. Um, I'm actually not too disappointed with the default. I tend to like a little more skin softening. You determine how smooth it is. If there's oily skin, how much. Um, let's see, you can add some shine in here, show you what that does. It gets rid of some of the oily skin, but she doesn't have any oily skin, so it just kind of makes it look more flat. So, see, this is that, that little bit of glow there. You can kind of eliminate some of it. We'll maybe do a little tiny bit, but overall, I don't like to remove that very much. Um, and then we can add more texture. I'm going to speak stream here and add 100 and watch what happens. You see, you get a little bit more of a skin texture feel. Some people really like that. Some people don't. Personal preference. Mm -hmm. I like to add a little bit, but not quite that much. So let's maybe add around 24-ish. So adds a little texture back. And then let's kind of watch what happens over here for shadows. Crank this all the way up. And then we're going to crank this all the way down. Pretty subtle. I can't see a whole lot happening actually with shadows here on this particular photo. Now, ethnicity, you'll notice that it's selected as Asian. Um, that's actually luck because I did a, a preview of this before, so that's just using the last um, value that I used. If I come back out, if I come back up here and say Caucasian. Um, this is the toning that it would apply. I did Asian. This is the default Asian toning. And so um, I can make some adjustments here. So let's say, for example, color shift, I'm going to kick up to about 58. And then warmth. I'm going to actually bring this back a little bit. And the warmth, I'm going to tone it down just a tad. This makes it keep from looking a little so, so red that it um, just starts to look unnatural. It can also affect the strength. I could just totally remove it, or I can go up here and turn it off, or I can just kind of dial it in as I see fit until I feel comfortable. Go up here to 90. I like what's happening here. And then, you know, how smooth the transitions happen. So let's just be extreme here, show you 100. 
some more yellow. So, some more down there. And again, you can kind of play with these to suit your tastes. Or turn it off all together. Personally, I like it. I think it makes a, a big difference. Now, let's zoom in here on the eyes. Watch what happens. If I come in here, my whitening, turn that off, I get the default eye color. Now, she's got pretty white eyes. She's a young model, but some people this difference could be pretty drastic and I'm going to boost it all the way up so see it whitened her eyes automatically for me that's a huge 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 time saver um, I'm actually pretty fond of this um, style of whitening that it does I think it's subtle yet um, fairly believable so see how this area was impacted when I boosted up the clarity that kind of fades out. So I actually like quite a bit of clarity in there. Takes a little bit more of a shine on the eye. So again, let's turn this off, show you before and after. You can also come in here. Side by side comparison to see the difference. I'm quite happy with how that looks. Okay, so now let's do the mouth. That's kind of annoying nuance of the current version. And so down here what we can do is we can start adjusting the teeth whitening. So let's turn that off. Again, Erica's teeth are bleached so they're pretty much as white as it gets. So this is probably not the best example for the whitening. But you see when I turn it all the way up it boosts up. So I'm going to Probably not do much whitening on her because she's she's pretty pretty white as it is. A vibrance is going to affect the lip color. Now you'll notice one problem with her lips is that she's got a little lipstick here, no lipstick at all in here, and then lipstick running through the veins. So if I boost this up, if she had lipstick on everywhere, it all brighten up real red. But since she doesn't have lipstick here, it just kind of affects the edges. That's again. You know, issue with this particular model, but something that happens quite often in our photo shoot. So two things you need to remember during a shoot. One, make sure your model's keeping her um, lipstick on evenly during the shoot. Um, and then two, when you're doing your post-processing, uh, account for this problem. So again, I'm probably not going to do very much with this one, just because I don't think it really is going to help me much here. It probably hurts me more than it helps me. So we're going to back out. And again, do a side by side, like before and after. Pretty good. Uh, not a lot of work done here. Um, this is straight out of the camera JPEG, no post processing at all, and I think it already looks quite a bit better. So let's apply. So we're left with a new layer here that came from Perfect Portrait. So Let's go ahead and call this 